What is going on, guys? My name is Hussein, and uh, in this video, I want to build an upload service uh, from scratch. And the goal is really uh, to build this service with uh, almost no libraries, really. In the front end, I'm going to use the built in uh, browser functionality, which is the file reader. This is the ability to read a file from disk of, of obviously that the, the user have picked. And then once I have the bunch of bytes, I'm going to stream those uh, bytes to the back end and then store the file on the back end. And uh, to transmit the uh, content to the back end, I'm going to use the Fetch API, which is also a standard. So my HTML is literally referencing no libraries, external third party libraries that are right. And on the back end, I'm going to make keep it simple as well. And uh, I'm going to use the vanilla HTTP library. And that is it to build a completely fully functional uh, upload uh, service. And um, let's test it. This is what we're planning to do. So I'm going to pick my uh, nginx.png file here, for example, and then go ahead and upload. And you can see there is a progress here. It is slow because I'm up uploading 1000 bytes per request obviously you can control that you can increase that but it's just all configurable at the end of the day and once the file is completely uploaded if you go to the back end you can see that this is the file effectively right and uh, there is no limit you can upload literally any file size you want because we were chunking it up right and uh, uh, sending it in small portions Obviously, this code is not going to be perfect. Uh, it can be improved, obviously, to have a, a resumability. If in case of a failure, you can resume it. All of this stuff can be built and, and added as feature. Once you understand the, the basic fundamentals of how this is actually working. So let's go ahead and upload, actually, a move web.mp4. And then just you can see that it's a little bit slower that is expected because we're sending a small chunks right this file and as you can see it's almost done and here's what is happening here when i pick a file i read that file using file reader i have an array buffer and then chunk it up and then send the each chunk my chunk size is default thousand. I can obviously change that. And then it's send that byte, sets of byte to the server and that server and I immediately write it to a file, obviously of my choosing. Okay, let's go ahead and, and start from scratch and then just, just enjoy building this from scratch, right? So start a brand fresh project here and, and uh, maybe we can start with the backend, right? I'm going to write index.js here. And my backend, I need an HTTP library, obviously. Right. Equal require HTTP. And that's pretty much the only library. And it's a built in library that's in, available on Node.js, right? And then let's go ahead and build a server. Equal uh, HTTP.create server. Let's just listen up and add a listening event. When we're starting listening, we're listening, something like that. Just we're gonna pick the port later. HTTP server, and uh, when when a request comes in, we're gonna get two beautiful parameters here. And uh, here's what I want to do: if uh, if the request the URL is equal 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 the root, right? Then what I'm gonna do if if we're visiting the root which is the slash then immediately i want to just read some index.html page here and then return it so let's go ahead and create that index.html index.html no on no this name html html file for this uh file uploader and uh, let's just do my file uploader there you go, my friend. And uh, how 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 do we how do we send the result? Respond at end immediately. I want to send a bunch of. So, okay, so I lied. I'm gonna need another library called fs. <laughs> We're gonna read from disk. 
I lied. Okay. We cannot read it from disk on the back end, right? Why? Because I need to read this index.html. So read uh, file synchronous and index.html. And then boom, return. And I just I want you just the end response and then I'll return it immediately, right? Uh, so that 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 ends my HTTP request. Let's go ahead and do HTTP server dot on port it it. All right, looks like a, what what, is, what am I doing here? Should be console dot log. Shish. All right, run no debug console listening. So open a new browser, run my file uploader. Nothing fancy. Okay, so we the first piece to serve the HTML files there. Now let's build up the actual HTML file. We really need a uh, a file, right? So there is a this thing that's called input type equal file, and let's give it an ID f, right? Because we're gonna read that thing, and then I'm gonna need uh, some sort of a dev element here, dev uh, output that will effectively output the progress bar. How far are we? Okay. We can do something like that. Look at this beautiful front end, guys. We might need actually a, bu a button, right? A button. Button ID equal button uh, upload. Right? And the button upload, we're going to call it read and upload because it's going to read the file and then it's going to upload the file. But no, none of the logic is wired, so we're going to need a script. Button upload equal document dot get to element by ID button upload just so we can wire the event and I'm gonna also give the output div output and then also gonna get the, get the file itself right so these are the elements that we're gonna need and we need to wire an event when someone clicks on the button that is effectively upload add an event listener so that what don't really need it to do anything so we're gonna do that so we need a to declare a file reader here equal new file reader and this will be available for us because or we are in the client right and this is just opens a file but here's the thing uh, you cannot just willy-nilly read any file in the browser. That's just a big security flaw, right? You have to ask the user to actually read, uh, select the file from the F, and then you're just reading that file. So let's get that file, right? A bunch of files. And I believe it's uh, f.files, if, if I'm not mistaken, right? It's effectively, it's an array. You can pick the select file we can support up even uploading multiple files if we want to we just really just do a loop so let's call this the file right so the file is this and it has its own objects and stuff like that we're gonna we're gonna go through the, it has a name it has a length and stuff like that so uh, up until here you didn't actually read the file you have metadata about the file so how about we actually go and show you what do we can what what do we see with this file right so if i refresh this thing we see my beautiful buttons and then i'm going to do that right then just just uh let's just do some debugging here i'm gonna put uh my file here can i can i put a breakpoint here i think i can put a breakpoint here right and then i'm gonna select a file engine axel click and immediately you can see that we're breaking point and here's what we have that's pretty much it the file selector only gives you the name they give you the size which is pretty useful this is useful metadata they give you the type of the image right and they give you the last modification date and so, so just without reading the file you have access to the full the metadata almost all the metadata you want right but that's not what we want. We're going to upload the damn thing, right? So we need to actually read it. And here's how you read the file. And I I have one complaint about this uh, library. Uh, you can do 
by the way, read as array buffer, binary string, the as text, if you know it's text. And uh, I'm going to choose to read it as an array buffer because I'm, I'm dealing with it as, as a bunch of bytes. I don't care what it is, right? And when you do that, right, you specify what to read, right? Which is the file, right? If you do that, then that is an asynchronous call. It's going to start calling a callback every time it reads a chunk. And these callbacks are defined in, I believe, uh, on load start, on progress, on load end, and on load. It's going to tell you how far, are, again, we're still in reading. We're still reading the file from disk to the memory in the, for the browser. So if you have a large file, it is worth to track the progress of this file, right? just the reading of it to memory what my, my problem with this is unfortunately the progress event doesn't tell you the actual bytes it read it will be really nice if it tells you hi hey, by the way i read this i read this no it just tells you how much it read because if it did tell me how much it reads as it as it reads it i can immediately go and send that chunk Right, so this will be a true streaming from the disk immediately to the network. Unfortunately, what we, what we have is only on load end, I believe, or just on load, I believe it's called. It tells you, hey, I'm done, and here's my file. And then you get an event function like that, where you say, okay, I'm done, right? So we can do a console.log here, for example, just that, so I can show you exactly what we have. We have we're going to have the event, we have the target, and we're going to have the actual full file on load. And that's the only really bad thing that I don't like. Not bad. I mean, I don't really want to read the whole file only so I can upload it next, right? Does that make sense? I want, I want to stream it from disk and stream it to the backend as I read it from disk, if, especially if it's a huge file. Regardless, this is a limitation that we have until I, unless I'm, I'm missing something let's save refresh we don't really need to this is all html so all we have to do is just refresh the page really we didn't really need to restart the server and uh choose a file boom boom read and let's put a uh did we actually read it oh there you go it's done right so now because it's done we have access to this ev thing the event progress event right and there is something called target i believe and in the target there is a result and look at this beautiful array buffer this is a beautiful array buffer what is that exactly reveal in memory inspector oh that's new i never seen this before reveal in memory inspector panel Reveal in memory inspector panel. All right. So we have the access, the full thing. And you can play with this. So your event to upload will be on finish load. When Once we finish loading that, now we can actually upload the damn thing. But since it's, an, uh, it's a load event, so what do we do? We're going to chunk it up, right? We cannot just upload this whole file to, to the back end. And, and you can try. You're going to fail because the request will be so huge that most routers in the middle, most uh, uh, proxies in the middle won't, uh, will not successfully deliver that request. And even most back end and most proxies have timeouts, request timeouts. I say, okay, you, your request is too, just too huge. I'm not going to send seven gigabyte in one request. So it's not a good idea to upload a huge file. It's, it won't even let you. That's why you have to break it up. All right. So how about we start uh, chunking this up and um, sending it to the back end? Let's do that. All right. So how about we start uh, chunking this up and um, sending it to the back end? Let's do that. So back to our beautiful HTML page. So let's add something here. So it says, okay, uh, red successfully. Right. And then we're going to do ev. Dot Target dot 
results. All right, so result is the actual thing, right? The byte length is what we, that's the total length, okay? So now, if we do some magic, right? Let's, let's create a, a constant here, call it uh, chunk size. And we're gonna make it thousand bytes, almost a kilobyte, not, not quite. And this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do a beautiful for loop. Let i equal zero, which is the chunk ID. Let's call it chunk ID, right? Chunk ID zero, while chunk ID is less than, how many chunks do we have? So how many chunks do we have? Chunk count is equal, literally this is a thing, right? Divided by the chunk size. That gives us X amount of chunks. But there's always remaining, right? There is always an extra chunk with the, with the remain. Like, so let's say we have a thousand and one bytes, right? So if you've divided by a thousand, then you get one, but also there, there is a one byte remained, right? So this is the leftover stuff, right? So if you have like, uh, I don't know, 3001 divided by three, you get three chunks, right? One, two, three but there is one byte remains so we need to also send that last point so we're gonna we're gonna play with that so i'm gonna loop through this chunk id from zero up until chunk id while chunk id is less than chunk count just looping through all the chunk uh uh chunk id plus so plus so okay but here's what i want to do i want to go an extra one loop so i can either do plus one to account for the last uh, remaining chunk with the remainder. That's why I have to do plus one as well. And uh, here's what I'm gonna do. What are we gonna do is, uh, here's the actual chunk itself, the content, right? We're gonna do ev.target.result. Uh, there's a neat function called slice, which slices the array bytes, which is a huge thing into whatever you want so we're gonna start from so if we start from byte zero you can tell it okay go to byte number thousand this is not how many bytes you go this is the byte you want to go so if you said thousand that means this is going to give you a thousand bytes if you get two thousand this is going to give you two thousand bytes right if you do this one thousand and one thousand that means go uh, this is literally just going to give you one byte, right? So if you go 1,000 and then give me 2,000, that means if you said 1,000 and 2,000, that means, okay, start from 1,000 and go to 2,000, position 2,000, and read anything between this. So if you do the math, really, it's just literally chunk ID times the chunk size, right? Right, which is 1,000 in this case, right? So if it's zero times chunk id the, the chunk size is going to be start with zero right and then what do we really what where are we going to what are we going to read we're going to read exactly the same if you think about it the same location but plus a thousand which is plus the chunk size that is that is the math i think i got it right let's go through the loop if you start from zero then this is zero right if you start from zero, then this is zero. This is gonna be zero plus a thousand, which is gonna be a thousand. Awesome. If you start with one, then this is gonna be one thousand, right? This is gonna be one thousand plus one thousand, so two thousand. And so we're gonna read the next thousand and the next thousand and the next thousand. All right. So that's now we're gonna get have a beautiful array chunks which we need just to send to the backend. How do we send stuff to the backend? Well, first of all, we need to make this function into asynchronous. Right, I'm going to tell you why, because I'm going to use a wait here, right? A wait fetch. We're going to do an, a fetch command. We're going to localhost 8080, right? And then we're going to go to upload here. This obviously, there is no route, by the way, here. The concept of routes is just literally path. So we have to have an if statement on the back end to capture that, right? So what are we sending? We're sending a bunch of stuff. 
So the first thing you're going to specify is the method. I'm going to post because, hey, we're sending stuff. The next thing we're going to send is the headers, right? It's an array of headers. And the final thing is the body. And I guess the body is the easiest thing. Can you guess what the body is? The body is the chunk, baby. For the headers, we really need to tell the backend that, um, and not just the backend, any proxies in the middle. It's, hey, by the way, I'm, I'm sending some bytes. And this is called the content type. The content type is called application slash octet. I always misspell this. Octet stream. Octet stream. And then the content length is is what? It's chunk dot length. Hey, this is how much I'm sending you. Beautiful. So we're looping and we're sending a bunch of requests, but they are kind of stateless. They know, don't know each other. We want to somehow tag this request with some unique identifier and this is the file name so i want to generate a unique file name here right and i want the easiest really better way to do it is just create a file name here and the file name is and the file is actually up there right the file the file the name i believe it was the property called that name and then when you get the file right this is the whole name with the extension but but what if you uploaded the same file again right we don't we we want a com completely unique one so i'm just gonna do math the random here uh times a thousand just to create a some randomness here on the, at this end all right and here's the file name and that is the unique file name are there better ways to do this? There's always better ways to do anything, to be honest. But I think a simple thing here, really. So now we have a unique way. We have a unique upload ID. Think of it like this way. Right? So now I'm going to send an extra header here. And this is a custom header that I'm going to make up. And this is called, literally, I'm going to call it file name. <laughs> and uh, there you go. The file name. Now this is the front end. We're looping and we're sending a request. We're awaiting it because we want to be in the loop waiting. We want we don't want to go to the next loop, send the next request before we actually get a response, some sort of a response from the server. Okay, so that's why we're awaiting this. If I don't have this, if I remove this, this is gonna be asynchronous. That means the whole entire loop, whatever chunk count, chunk count is, is gonna be sending. A flood of requests to the backend, right? Order, we have no idea if we can maintain order or not, right? Threading will be, it will gonna be a mess, of, 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 and you're gonna run out of resources in your in your client. So you, we have, this is one way to do it. We prop, we can. Can you do it? Probably you can. If you know, if you if you if you want to parallelize stuff, you can do it. It's just to a limit, right? But if you're doing it this way, then you're gonna really run out of. So we're almost serialized. We on we don't send the next request, the next chunk until we get a response that the chunk has been received. I'm not handling any errors, cases, or what. No, but we're only sending a chunk when we get a response from the server that we actually received some sort of response from the server. So that's that's what we're doing here. Uh, can this be optimized? Of course. You can definitely optimize that. Uh, send seven chunks at a time. Yeah. But you need some sort of a finesse to do that. Out of the scope of this video. All right. Backend. What do you have for me? So this path is when we are requesting the, the URL. Right? But what if I'm requesting the upload? If I'm uploading, what do you have for me? Well, I need some data, right? First of all, I need the, what do I need from you? I need the file name. Can I get the file name from you? Very simple. Headers. So request.headers. And we have a beautiful custom header right here. It's just, hey, that's a file name. And then there is a nice function in the FS, right? That appends the content synchronously, right? Append some content to a file. And if the file doesn't exist, it will create it for us. All right, so what are we gonna do? 
let's get the chunk but here's the here is the trick here where we need to read the body right of the request because it's a post request right so what do we do here right how do we read the body request if you think about it i don't know if it's, this shows you it's an incoming message and if you go to it's an incoming message if you go to the help right always the help is your friend if you go to the help it's going to tell you that this is actually just another stream yeah so if it's a stream then you can essentially just read that stream right and there's an event called data and this data is the data in the body itself so we're going to receive that chunk and then what are we going to do with the chunk i will take that chunk and i immediately first of all maybe just write a console message here says okay received chunk awesome so now what we need to do is just write this chunk to the file how do we do that fs dot append file synchronous to the path guess what the path is just i don't care but in the same location here and then what's what's the what are we writing we're writing a bunch of bytes and this is the chunk that we're writing boom receive chunk slam and literally once you're done with this respond upload it so this will keep repeating depending on the size of the chunk right uh one request might have many many chunks, and this is what we're talking about this might time out right so if the smaller the chunk size that you send the better in this case so i'm sending 1000 which is too low by the way right and now we have to restart the backend and i have no idea if this is going to work from the first time so let's go ahead and refresh and select my nginx so this net read or this net read how many chunks do we have we have 330.954 chunks and we're gonna read successfully let's continue boom boom enter the loop we're gonna loop loop get the chunk beautiful thousand array buffer chunk and then we're gonna call the backend post to the backend up oh, one oh, oh, we sent something we sent something did we get a response looks like we did we got a response nice we got a response now let's just let it run go to the back end we have a beautiful random <laughs> ass file that nginx and we have the beautiful nginx right so now if what we forgot to do is is actually just do some progressor on the on the front end let's do that actually how about we do that progressor or this net progressor progressor index.html so i'm looping uh the progressor should be re really easy right if you think about it uh we have uh do we have uh, my output yeah div output what are we gonna do once we send it only when actually it's sent so what we're gonna do here is text content equal literally uh chunk id right divided by ch chunk count times thousand hundred that's the percentage right see if we if that does that's right uh we don't really need to restore the backend boom let's do it let's pick something a little bit large i want something large sure let's do this boom again boom awesome <laughs> you can see there is a percentage here but we didn't do that math the round we don't really care about this Ooh, zero let me just round it round it round it up a little bit let's do it again and let's pick a, a large file now boom upload uh-oh we have a beautiful progressor nice cancel let's do my podcast my podcast uh, logo is huge it's like seven meg sheesh if i do this and i upload it look at that it's so slow but if i do this i actually can see it right here and uh, the beauty of this is just visual studio code is gonna is gonna actually draw it for you as you receive it does this uh do any flashbacks guys 
1998, right? Back when we browse uh, pages. Look at this. <laughs> That's some upload service right there, man. Oh, this is ridiculous. Let's increase the chunk size, guys. We're going to increase the chunk size. 1,000 is too little. So, let's do, how about 5,000? Five kilobytes. You don't need more than five kilobytes. Run. Yeah, we're going to be here forever. Otherwise, refresh. Pick my podcast. Oh, even five kilobytes is too low, but sure. Eight megabytes. It's doing something. It's doing something. There you go. Done. We received 309. No. We received 1,650 chunks. You get the idea, guys. Percentage. I'm saying, can you upload zip files? Sure. Upload. Here's a zip file source code of the of my Nginx course. Where is it? There you go. Reveal in Finder. Extract. Look at that. Nginx. This is my source code. So yeah, that's what I want to show, guys. Works, uh, but there are a lot of flaws. It's far, 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 far from perfect. Uh, I'm going to push the code. So yeah, feel free to edit one. And How many lines of code do we have? Let's take a look. In the HTML size, uh, we have uh, 58 lines of code to do an upload. And on the back end, what, 24, 26? 26, 26 lines of code. Obviously, the more you need to add um, resumability, right which you can right with this with this model you're just appending right if so if there is one failure and the next chunks chunks come in right the file will be corrupt right this is the file from perfect but that's why you have to retry the same chunk id that means you have to have idempotency what is it called idempotency this name right idempotency you have to have idempotency so each chunk should have a unique identifier with it, effectively, right? Uh, what else? What else? What else? So another bad thing I did here uh, is I sent a header, a custom header. Usually you're going to send it either in the body uh, or in the URL parameter, something other than the header. But the problem with the header is uh, if you have, it's a hop, it's not a hop by hop basis, right? The nginx or ha proxy or any proxy in the middle if you have you is proxying then uh, it might drop the header so it's like what is this i don't know it right it's not it's an unknown header unless you configure it so it's sent the, uh, these headers right i believe experimental headers have to start with x or something like that again it works here when you have but uh, when you have just us uploading uh, another thing uh, i want to discuss this can be used to to build a scalable upload service. Yes. Uh, what, do I, what do I mean by a scalable upload service? Today, this is a stateful service. Why? Because I am writing to the server that I receive. That means if my next request goes to another server, another chunk will be written to another server. Obviously, that will just break the whole thing. So what you need to do is, what I would do is one solution is have a database on the back end and write the chunks to a blob table, right? Just write the chunks uniquely identified by a chunk ID on the table. And when the client is done, it says, okay, I'm done. What are you going to do? One of the servers will read the database and then aggregate all the chunks and then write it to a persisted location s3 or one of the servers and then retrieve that server this in that case it will be a completely scalable upload service so each chunk that you send the client send from the front end will go can go to a completely different server and that is okay because each server will not write it to its own thus being stateless right it will write it to a database which is a third thing it's a completely different thing so yes the system is stateful because we have a database, but the application, the backend application is stateless. It does not care about anything. It just merely, you can destroy it, restart it, doesn't matter, right? 
the client will retry and then we will hit another server which will, that server will hit the backend and then write it so we can do so much cool stuff to make a scalable upload service right and then the front end again guys we can do some more things this is so this is so uh, you know this is this is very very inperformant i'm waiting right let, let me actually show you what will happen if i don't do this if i do this right if i just say okay and just loop through and then send everything <laughs> this thing is gonna break this thing is gonna break let's, let's do it whoa look at that <laughs> insufficient resources because that is just insane you're doing a loop and then sending a flood of requests almost in parallel not quite but almost in parallel you're sending the next request despite you didn't receive a, a, a response from the first one so i can imagine now the look at that look at that so now the connection uh, yes we're doing multiplexing not multi, this is a reverse multiplexing in this case right because http 1 1 that's what we're using we're not using http 2 uh so the browser opens six tcp connection and then reverse multiplex the request on these multi tcp connections and then pull them back on the back end and god knows if you're gonna get them in order or not you will not get them in order so definitely i'm not get you could get the file uh you could get the file on uh on order by chance but uh, this needs a lot of work right you can take advantage of this thing Right. Let's say, say send five in parallel, four in parallel. Play with that a little bit, and then make sure that hopefully they reach in order in the back end. And if they, because why does why does the order matter in my particular case? Because I'm just appending to the uh, to the file immediately. If it was a database, and I have a a sequential chunk ID, the order doesn't matter because I'm gonna write it to the database, and I have a sequence right so if sequence number two chunk number two is arrived before chunk number one doesn't matter because i'm going to order it at the end i have a field that is representing the orders of chunks all right guys that's it that's it for me today i'm going to see you in the next one hope you enjoy this video you know guys it's, it's just i just love to break these things and just uh, go back to the basics and fundamentals from time to time all right guys um see you in the next one you guys stay awesome on this night bye